cognitive computing. Um, it's a very big topic and very exciting, at least for me. Today, I will try to present you one of the view of this uh, topic. Uh, so, and more precisely, view on effects on our lives. So, hi, my name is Andre. I am solution architect and uh, software architect at Pentagon Company. During my experience, I had a lot of topics linked to software architecture, B2C and B2B solutions, big data, agile practices and frameworks. And of course, R&D missions on machine learning. So um, just before to begin, some important notes for you. If you have any question regarding presentation topic, please address me in QA section from the Zoom. It's in the bottom of the Zoom tool. And if you have any other issues outside presentation, you can write me directly in the chat. I will try to solve them as well. Okay, so now we are ready and we can begin. So in this uh, presentation, I will go over a few topics. Over representation of cognitive computing, uh, a short history of AI um, uh, evolution, and um, impact of cognitive computing on our life, some key players and their products on this uh, world of cognitive computing, and what is next, what is next after. Uh, I will try with a simple example of Goldman Sachs, so how they manage to organize internal resources. So the Goldman Sachs, it's an American multinational investment bank and financial services company. So during last two decades, Goldman Sachs managed to reduce 600 of traders to only two traders. So thanks to an AI engine that replaced the work of all 600 traders. So you can imagine this, all street traders from one side and a computing system from another side. So amazing, yes, but it's not so easy. Uh, to maintain all this artificial, artificial intelligence engine, uh, they hired 200 engineers. So somehow it was not, not full replacement, but it's a partial transformation of competencies from trading to computer engine, engineers, computer science, computer co cognitive computing. Uh, Okay, so cognitive computing. What is cognitive computing in general? So it's a technology for the development of computer system from software and hardware elements, which have ability to think, to think and to react like human minds. So it's just a set of elements of hardware software solutions. Now, in order to enter deeply on this subject, so it's an intersection of neuroscience, supercomputing, big data, nanotechnology. Uh, somehow neuroscience has cited a lot computer engineers in creation of cognitive computing. Uh, once supercomputing in big data appear, and we have more and more solutions today about these two domains, uh, we can say that cognitive computing have been possible to, to be built. So, and from on our side, the last one, nanotechnology, it's somehow it's a, like an interface between uh, computer cognitive, co cognitive computing technologies and human brain. So in order to, um, to make able humans to be more performant. Uh, in few words regarding the history of, uh, of uh, cognitive computing. So, um, cognitive computing and artificial intelligence in general. So, the first moment what we can uh, dis discover in the history of AI, it was in 1943. So, here we can find the computational model, first computational model artificial intelligence, which was mainly based on some logics and some 
uh, verifications and so on, but somehow it was the first one. After in um, 1957, we, uh, we discovered perceptron. Perceptron is the main basic element of neural network. So uh, after in 1965, it's one of the biggest moment I can say, it's when Ivahenko and Lapa uh, managed to build first deep learning system, name it group model data handling. So it was the first one, not the best one, but the first one, somehow in the deep learning. After in 1974, we, uh, we can observe the discovering of back propagation. It's somehow it's backward propagation of errors. It's a technique in order to help to deduce and to build a better error. And I like this to optimize our deep learning model. Uh, after, uh, after this in uh, 89, 1989, uh, French scientist Jan Le Kuhn, uh, managed to build and to implement a zip code recognition system, which was a machine learning system, uh, was built in order to recognize handwritten zip codes. After in uh, the next phase in 2000, we can observe different, different small events that appear. It was like Fei Fei Li, uh, founded ImageNet uh, website with uh, millions of images, labeled images that help a lot artificial intelligence and machine learning models in order to learn better and recognize images better. Uh, after we can uh, uh, see the Google uh, invest in uh, Google Brain's uh, internal team, uh, that begin to work intensively on different machine learning and deep learning solutions. And NVIDIA enter also in deep learning uh, world. They proposed all the NVIDIA hardware, GPU mainly, for uh, optimizing of uh, performance of calculation and learning of different models. After the famous uh, game of IBM, uh, what was planned by ABM and uh, Watson, where Watson uh, win uh, to uh, Jeopardy gamers, the best gamers in uh, 2011. Uh, also in 2011, Microsoft uh, released its speech recognition solution. In 2012, Google uh, proposed um, uh, Mm, proposed uh, uh, speech recognition also solution and the famous cat experiment of Google that recognizes the cat from the millions of images. Also in 2040, Google uh, both DeepMind startup with uh, a reinforcement deep learning, um, uh, deep reinforcement learning uh, algorithms. Microsoft win it ImageNet contest. Uh, and uh, after in 2016, uh, DeepMind built the AlphaGo model. Also, Google founded TensorFlow. Um, AlphaGo <laughs> trained a new model. It's uh, something like a children model of uh, machine learning model. So a children of artificial intelligence, AlphaZero, let it's name it that it was better that AlphaGo that was learned, built it and modeled it in 2016. So AlphaZero is the best, best, best uh, Go gamer in the world. And also the AutoML project of Google. And today in 2018, 2090, today we can say that artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's something everywhere. In the blockchain, in edge computing, in the internet of the things, everything, sorry, <laughs> privacy enhancement, security. So everywhere we can say that we have many, many startups that begin to work and to use these uh, technologies. So um, let's go deeper. So deep learning. 
I uh, use it this world. So deep learning somehow cognitive computing begins to uh, when deep learning begin. So the impact in general on the industry begin in uh, 2000. But somehow it was not so visible for us, for everybody, for all of us. Large scale application started around 2010. So uh, 2010. And um, ABM Watson, I noted on the start and the history evolution of artificial intelligence, this game, ABM Watson, Joe Party. So it's a, it's a game, just a few words about the um, rules. So uh, the idea is that you have some questions. All these questions, they are formulated in the form of answers. And you, the answer must be the question that will match better with the <laughs> put it question from the start. So something like this. It's a little strange, but somehow it's like this. For example, so the question is President of France in 2016. So the answer will be who is Francois Hollande? So for example, this one. Or for example, handwritten char character recognition model implemented by Jan Le Kuhn. So the answer will be what is Le Net? So something like this. Now, uh, we can say that uh, IBM organized this game in order to, um, to put uh, in competition two best gamers like Ken and Brad uh, with IBM Watson model. It was an artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning uh, model. So it's a cognitive computing, a real cognitive computing. Why? Because he reacts like human. Uh, Ken. Uh, Ken, it was the best gamer of all the games. So he win it the much as possible games from the uh, Jeopardy game. And Brett, uh, Brett uh, he was the gamer who win it in one game the maximum amount of, uh, of points. So these two gamers was put it beside IBM Watson. And after the game, who win it? Bam, 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 IBM Watson. So it was, uh, somehow it was the goal. <laughs> it was the goal, but the goal it was also to demonstrate the capabilities and how it worked. So from one side, IBM Watson was put in the same condition like Ken and Brett. So, uh, it was a question that was formulated by a human. So IBM Watson needed to transform all this question from net, like using natural language processing, transforming some digital information, and after using machine learning model that was built before to prepare the answer. And when the answer was chosen, IBM Watson tried to reformulate all this digital information in sound in order to formulate the answer. So somehow it was uh, equivalent the complexity for all the three uh, gamers. And finally, IBM Watson managed to, to win. What you can observe here, two things. So the difference is not so much. From, for example, comparing with Ken, with bread maybe, yeah, but with Ken, you can see that the difference is not so much somehow. And from our side, you need to imagine that IBM Watson it's not, was just a simple PC with, I don't know, two CPU and eight giga RAMs. So it was a big, big computer in the cloud of IBM that was put it. And all this cloud worked during the game in order to uh, give the best performance for IBM Watson during the Jeopardy game. And from our side in the bottom, you can see how uh, IBM Watson uh, chose the answer. So somehow each time when IBM Watson tried to find a best answer, he had every time a list of answers. And from this list of answers, each answer was weighted by a um, percentage of uh, if it's true or not. So somehow like this. And just IBM Watson want to do it. Tr uh, try to sort all this uh, list and choose the top, the answer from the top. Just 
to enter a little deeply in the explanation. So somehow before IBM Watson put it, was put it in the game, IBM Watson was um, uh, learn it, teach it to know all these questions. So all the database from the Wikipedia and many, many in our articles was connected to the brain of IBM Watson. And all these questions, IBM Watson tried to split in different sentences, filter, uh, score these sentences, find in different kind of articles, and after uh, the result, build a tree, a tree of the links and put the weights of these uh, links. Like this, uh, in the brain of IBM Watson was built a big, big, big tree of different links between different sentences, uh, what makes sense. And finally, in order to build the answer, so when the question is put it before uh, IBM Watson, he tried to find in this tree the links and find to try the uh, what uh, what are the links with the question that was put it. If he find a couple of sentences that he can match and build a, a phrase, so like this he to do it. So something like this. Somehow in internally the algorithm and the architecture it's it's bigger, but uh, in general the model that was built by IBM Watson. It was a, like a tree. Uh, now, just to be synchronized, I used a few words. I used it until now, machine learning. I used it artificial intelligence, deep learning, neural network, and uh, reinforcement uh, learning, and so on. Just to be clear, machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence. So somehow, artificial intelligence is everything. When we speak about artificial intelligence, we cover everything, and deep learning and machine learning. Uh, deep learning is a class of machine learning algorithm. So somehow machine learning, it's something like principles. And in deep learning, we have from these principles, a class of principles that can do uh, and solve problems better. And like this, in order to group this kind of problems, we say that there are a solution, deep learning solution. Neural network is a framework. So we can see like this. So it's a framework from machine learning domain. And after, if we use words like DNN, deep neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, RNN, uh, uh, recurring neural network, so all of these, they are architectures from deep learning using class of problems, deep learning, and using neural net frameworks. So somehow it's here. Now, where is cognitive computing? So cognitive computing, it's a, it's a set of hardware and software solutions. So somehow it's... Uh, Everything, it's a solution from deep learning that it's implemented in one of frameworks, architectures like recurring or convolutional network and coupled to hardware that uh, give this possibility to build this model. So somehow this is, is a cognitive computing. So if we can build a solution that can react like human, for example, recognize an image or recognize a sound or build a son, or, uh, um, or for example, uh, hear something and react in some way. So it's human reaction. So somehow it's cognitive computing. Uh, leading companies. So key, uh, key actors of all this field. So somehow today we can say and feel in the world that Microsoft, Google, Facebook, they do something. IBM Watson, sure, exactly. So all these companies, they have solutions and they invest very, very much in these solutions. From one side, why? Because they have resources. From another side, they have uh, big scientists like Jan de Kuhn, Geoffrey Milton, Hamilton, and our scientists that can help uh, on building uh, deep learning solutions. And also they have data. They have many, many data. So uh, 
just a few words for each one. Image recognition, ImageNet. ImageNet, maybe it's not a competitor for Google and Microsoft and so on, but somehow they help it a lot in the development of machine learning. ImageNet, founded by Lele Lee uh, Fei Fei in uh, 2007, uh, they uh, proposed a network, uh, they proposed a database, an open database, that uh, it can be used by everybody in order to build a better model for learning image recognition. Learn uh, how we can recognize from image what is mentioned in this uh, image. So all this database consists in images, labeled images. There are millions of uh, images that are stored in, uh, in uh, ImageNet. And for example, the first uh, very important um, results that was uh, um, what was obtained using this uh, ImageNet, it was AlexNet, what was built by uh, a few LFs of uh, Jeffrey Hinton. Uh, and uh, they managed to arrive to a error rate, rate with 50%. So it means that from 1,000 of images, uh, just 150, it was with errors uh, detected by error. But uh, in 2016, uh, Microsoft uh, implemented and ResNet uh, model that uh, it was uh, better than human performance. So the error rate, it was 3%. And overthink this thanks a lot on ImageNet. So ImageNet proposed this database for everybody and for Microsoft also, and for Google and for many, many in our scientists in order to build these models and to perform the error rate. Uh, so now Microsoft managed to build one of the models that it's outperform a human. So the human is five percent of errors, and Microsoft with uh, ResNet managed to build uh, a model with three percent of error. So um, um, just a small graph about different kind of models that was built during the years. So ImageNet, they propose a contest each year. So everybody can participate to this contest. For example, in 2020, the 12, it was AlexNet with 50, uh, 15% of errors. After in uh, 2016, uh, it was a ResNet, sorry, it's uh, 2015. It was a ResNet of Microsoft that built it the best of three years. Inception, it's a Google model. So it's better than ResNet. Um, somehow it's look like this. Uh, one of main points regarding AlexNet, for example, that was the first one that managed to give best results. It's uh, so AlexNet was trained on uh, um, 15 million labeled images. So in these 15 million labeled images, we can find 22,000 of categories of images. And all this model was trained during six days on two PC that have uh, um, uh, GPU, uh, what was build it with GPU NVIDIA graph cards, graphic cards, GTX 5, uh, 580. And for all these things, they use it in uh, a framework and architecture, deep convolutional neural network. So it was something very similar that Lenet, uh, that Jan LeCun built it for Lenet. Um, now for Google. Uh, Google, uh, also it's very important. Um, uh, leader in this domain. So uh, Google Brain, it's a project of Google that was built in 2011. Uh, they introduced neural nets and speech recognition in the middle of, 20, uh, of 2012. And they retained a neural nets pioneer, Geoffrey Hinton. 
so Geoffrey Hinton. So the, it, it is a very big scientist in everything that it's mean uh, deep learning the neural net. So, um, and uh, also Google uh, both DeepMind and uh, and uh, deep uh, recurring uh, learning project AlphaGo. So, um, uh, and uh, also they begin to work on TensorFlow Science uh, 260. And uh, they begin to use in two, 2000, sorry, 2016. And uh, in 2018, they uh, begin to use a TPU, Tensor Processing Unit, uh, for Google Cloud Platform. And today, Google have around 1,000 deep learning projects, like AutoML, AlphaZero, and many, many other projects. So uh, Google, it's very powerful. So they do very good everything that it's mean deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, cognitive computing. But somehow, sincerely, what I, uh, so there you can find a few services that Google propose on Google Cloud Platform already prepared for you. So we can connect Google Cloud Platform and reuse these services. So, but somehow Microsoft remained the leader so Microsoft uh, begin it almost in the same time like Google, and they introduced the speech recognition before Google in two, 2011. Uh, now they use the neural net for search rankings, photo search translations, for everything that's uh, their internal products of uh, Microsoft. It somehow they have a big uh, R&D team that works every time on all the subjects. Uh, and um, and um, so they, for example, in 2015, here it's correct in, uh, year, in 2015 with ResNet, Microsoft uh, win it uh, ImageNet contest with 3%. And for example, they build it in one of the best speech recognition uh, engine that have 6.3 errors in recognition of the sounds. So somehow Microsoft is leading in, in solutions, but in the same time, Google also have many, many, many things that they started and they reuse it by in our companies. For example, TensorFlow. So TensorFlow, it's a big platform that is built and started by Google, but somehow and Microsoft and Azure uh, and uh, Amazon uh, use TensorFlow and propose to their clients this platform for uh, in order to build uh, better and to uh, have different tools in order to build machine learning models. So Microsoft, what they propose on Azure, on the cloud of Amazon also, they propose a bunch of services, different services. So some, some of them, they are very common. Some of them, they are custom services that already they are aligned to different kinds of needs. But uh, it's almost the same thing like Google, just what I can note that Azure, for example, Azure machine learning, it's better in order to begin. So it's easier, it's much easier than in our solution that are proposed by in our companies. Facebook, sure. Facebook also, it's a big part, it's a big leader in this uh, domain. So for example, they hired uh, Jan Lukun, who is the pioneer of everything that is mean machine learning and deep learning. So now today, Facebook using neural net to translate about two billions user posts per day in more like uh, 40 languages. So it's, um, it's, a big, it's a big number. Uh, so now they have different kinds of projects in order to reorganize photo and to give a better uh, category uh, tree uh, of uh, all the photo. Uh, so in order to provide some captions, speaking captions. Uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Uh, uh, entered in this world of deep learning in 2009. And NVIDIA, they proposed the hardware. They proposed the hardware uh, of, um, uh, of uh, in order to build models. 
And for example, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they use it hardware of NVIDIA, GPUs of NVIDIA. Now Google from 2018, they uh, build it uh, all, their own uh, hardware, that is named TPU, tensor processing units that replace GPU. But somehow GPU, for the moment, it's remained the main hardware that is used by all the scientists in machine learning domain. So, uh, uh, for example, just a note for you, with GPU we can reduce the, num the running time of learning during the learning uh, period from the weeks to days. So it's important, it's very important, CPU instead of GPU. So, um, uh, impact, impact on our life, so how it's impacted. I will um, give you an example, an R1. That it's something different that Goldman Sachs do it. Uh, something that comes from Financial Times. So it's uh, also it's a big company. Uh, this company one day they uh, ask it to a startup stuff to build a model that it's named Emma, and this Emma model was able to build any article uh, from just. Uh, uh, if you give to this uh, model just the subject, just the topic of the article, and Emma was able to build everything inside the article like a human. So to write articles and invent different kind of ideas and phrases and so on. Uh, so, and Financial Times, what would they, what would they <laughs> do it at this moment? So they plan to do a contest, a small contest, yes, to put uh, from one side Emma and to build uh, an article on the subject unemployment in the UK and from our side the best uh, uh, the best reporter that exists in financial time so they put it the both from one side one from our side and they the goal it was the same unemployment in the UK so Emma finished it to build the article in 12 minutes and the best reporter, he managed to finish in uh, 35 minutes. So somehow Emma win it from the timing, but after it was the editor, the editor who reviewed the both articles, he compared it, what, what, was, um, what was the case. And um, so from one side, he uh, observed that, um, that the both and Emma and reporter, they handled very good the facts and they put it very good, all the facts correctly in the context uh, of the topic. So from this side, it was okay for Emma and from the reporter, but somehow for Emma, for uh, regarding details, uh, Emma put it very many statistical details in the content, so it was it was very hard to to read this article, and in the same time Emma haven't managed it correctly to to focus the reader on the main point of the article. Somehow the best reporter he managed to do it, so it's the main point of the reporters in order to guide somehow the reader from the article and to focus once when the reader is ready to accept the the content to focus on something very important for him and like this that the reader can understand what is mean this article and why it was right somehow for Emma it was hard to do it so something it was many 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 statistical details and not without focus if something on something so from one side it was a good experiment but not so good like human and uh, but it's a beginning it's a beginning from one side because after Emma can be learned to do better uh, it work uh, today we have different kind of ONG institutes that research this part. For example, there are in uh, California, in Silicon Valley, uh, an ONG that it's named Foresight Institute that is already work today with the American government to build something like a land value tax 
and this land value tax is something like a tax that will be uh, uh, taxed from the companies who have uh, uh, who have implemented uh, artificial intelligence in giants and uh, and this tax it will be like a social help for everybody who will lose their work because of artificial intelligence engine. So <laughs> it's from one side, it will be taken from, from, the, uh, uh, from the companies who try to win something with uh, machine learning engines and from our side, it will give. So it's an in initiative. I don't know if it will be finalized, but somehow exists today ONG that work on this. And uh, also we have an hour analyze from McKinsey Global Institute that uh, let's say that don't worry, we have uh, 40, 30 years in order to wait when we will see really the impact on our life regarding how machine learning and deep learning replace humans. So, but somehow at this moment, we will have something like 100 millions of employ uh, employers who will lose the work because of deep learning, cognitive computing and machine learning. So somehow it's uh, the reality, but maybe it's not some, it's something like this. If we remember the example of Goldman Sachs, it's something like a transformation. It's not real replacement. Um, now just, to be prepared, what we need to do. We need to be prepared, we need to understand how it works. Sincerely, it's not something very complex. If we want to enter in this transformation, so somehow we need to understand uh, what is mean machine learning, deep learning, and how to build these solutions and how to maintain these solutions after. Uh, for example, for the beginning, it's a uh, best way to begin with Python languages. We have many, many libraries in Python. MATLAB also, it's a good tool and platform in order to experiment everything regarding uh, machine learning and uh, uh, deep learning. TensorFlow with Jupyter interface, it's something that it's, uh, uh, it's built by Google, it's maintained today, we have around 1000 pro projects in TensorFlow that build different kinds of solutions in machine learning and we can take these solutions and rebuild on TensorFlow platform and it's a, it's a set of tools. It's a set of tools that help us to build better uh, machine learning solutions. Also to begin for beginner data scientists and beginner uh, computer engineers. So Azure ML. Azure ML, it's what I found, it's the best tool in order to begin. It's graphical, it's visual. We can quickly begin and uh, and we can experiment different kind of algorithms without any line of code. So, and also IBM Watson. IBM Watson from Blue Mix Cloud, we have different kind of solutions already built by IBM, for example, for translations, for example, for uh, personal insight, for question answers. So the same question answer that was used in Jeopardy jo uh, game. And we can reuse it. We can reuse uh, this cloud in order to reuse all these services. So somehow it's like this. And uh, the best recipe for machine learning, so how it works, it means that every time you need to work around an algorithm. But before to have this algorithm, you need to think about the training data set, the data. So if you have that data, so after you can work on the algorithm. So you need to prepare the data. This is work, it's, it's very hard. It's a data scientist who work on this part, preparing of the data set. But after, when you have the data set, you need all your computer engineers skills in order to prepare the algorithm. So there are different kinds of algorithms already built. It. You have different kinds of architectures that exist already today. You need just to build this algorithm and after launch the training. Training will take all this training data set, will couple with, uh, in coupling with uh, algorithm and will prepare some uh, models like a result. So uh, all these models you can store in the database or in file system, so it depends of your uh, data storage. 
and uh, finally it's all so somehow during the training you can check the error rate if your error rate your error rate is okay so you can build the model if not you can come back to algorithm and change retune the algorithm in order to uh, have better results after the same thing for the model when you obtain it, the model the last uh, step it's prediction it's testing and it means that you take your model you have some test data that it's something else completely else that it's training data set and you try to predict on this test data it's there wrong or correct so you try to deduce the same error rate if your error rate is a good one so you can say that yes my algorithm is the best one and my model is the best one if not you must come back to algorithm retune algorithm retrain again and build the model so uh, when you obtain you will obtain your the best your rate so you are good so now something like this this part is for the beginners and who want to learn what is mean machine learning and how it work now after when you are more professional in this uh, domain so you can use machine learning deep learning in diff for different kind of problems for example for classification for classification of um, of images or of sounds in order to detect a label for example you have an image you have a cat have a dog for example localization also you can localize your element you can have an image or you can have a set of data and from this set of data you can localize uh, make a localization of uh, exactly of your data that respect some criteria detection also so you have some criteria and you want to detect where on the page or uh, on the image or on the data you have this uh, the segmentation also to have uh, exact uh, border of your uh, uh, of your uh, image for example clustering also you you have a set of data many many data for example how google uh, do it with uh, cat experiment and you don't know what you have in this data and you apply some algorithm in order to clusterize to make a clusterization of this data in order to separate in different domains in different groups and after analyzing one group you can detect that this group have some patterns and some common things after all these patterns you can give something like a label for example a cat so this group is for cat images regressions is something that is very common in statistical analytics that you deduce uh, some uh, uh, some hypothesis based on some statistical data and for all these things so if you enter more uh, professional in the area so you can use tensorflow with keras and many in our libraries you can enter on amazon SageMaker that propose the same tensorflow but with more things and build productional uh, solutions data science also mathematics dnn rnn uh, it's all these things it's list of architectures and uh, uh, and uh, solutions in order to build better um, um, uh, oh. it was the presentation sorry for this Uh, so, um, so if you have all these solutions, you can build different kind of, uh, you can solve different kind of problems in order to uh, in order to implement your um, machine learning model and to uh, make some hypothesis based on some data, for example, for images or sounds. Um, I just begin to tell you about TensorFlow. So TensorFlow, it's a, it's a framework, it's a platform with different kind of uh, libraries and uh, things already built it there. So that you can use in order to implement your machine learning algorithms. And also it proposes everything like an interface in order to communicate better with GPU, CPU. Also today exists uh, communication with TPU. 
TensorFlow platform. Uh, image recognition, so the best solution for image recognition is convolutional neural network. So if you need this kind of uh, solution and you have these kind of problems, so you can use convolutional neural networks in order to build uh, your algorithm. And for sound and natural language processing, better one, it's a recurring neural network. So, um, some, so uh, somehow it's uh, the best solutions. And um, at the end, uh, where we can use all the machine learning uh, solutions. So um, everything that it means each and natural language processing. So there are, we have deep learning, machine learning and cognitive computing. Face recognition also, yes. Uh, today we can see many, many solutions on car driving, Tesla, Google, and uh, many in our uh, leaders who work on this, uh, on this domain. Visual art processing, uh, natural language processing, uh, drug discovery and toxicology. Also, it's uh, uh, very important today to discover different kind of new drugs, uh, depending on some characteristic features. I learned it a little and I, <laughs> I was amazed that it's very important today and, uh, and there we have machine learning that it's used in order to, um, uh, um, to make some hypothesis regarding what kind of new drugs can be invented. Uh, customer relationship management also in CRM systems. Um, um, recommendation systems in order to build better recommendation for the user. Mobile advertising, also it's coupled to recommendation systems, so it's the same thing. Depending on some actions and profiling of the user, we can deduce some, uh, some interest of users. Control strategies, yes, we have uh, machine learning today that can uh, do some analysis on the company or in the different kind of systems like infrastructure systems and deduce some improvements and optimization on the process. Financial fraud detection also, yes. And of course, military. So this demand also, it's a very important finance, uh, who finance very much uh, all the machine learning uh, solutions. So um, somehow it's this. So um, this is all in general. I will try to follow a few questions that you put it for me. And um, okay, so I see we have in the chat and we have in the, um, mm, yeah, I have the first question regarding the supervised learning. Uh, so uh, supervised learning, so we have supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So supervised learning, it's something like it's a controlled learning. So it's a, it's a type of learning that we have for machine learning models and deep learning models, the same thing. So it means that for supervised learning, we need to identify and to train the model based on some features and criteria that we need to identify in comparing with unsupervised learning. And from another side, we, have, we need to train the, uh, the system based on some results that we know. So from one side, we have inputs and we have outputs. And we need to give the both to the system, to the algorithm that he learned from this input, what is the best out output and if it's much better to the output. And uh, depending on these things, he detect the errors, the accuracy and so on. So it's supervised learning. So the, we can we need to give the both. Unsupervised learning it's something like we we don't know what we will obtain in the result. For example, a classical problem that is resolved with unsupervised learning it's for example clustering. So we have a set of data, we build our algorithm, we write a code an algorithm that can identify a pattern, but we don't know this pattern. So we can identify the feature that will characterize all this. Uh, all the clusters. So it means that algorithm will execute uh, the algorithm on all the data set 
and will identify a group of the data that can have a pattern, common pattern between uh, all this data. And this is clustering. So this is unsupervised learning. So it means that we cannot supervise what he will do and what kind of pattern he will find. In supervised learning, somehow we, we, are, we try to guide the model, uh, the algorithm to build the model. So we give the input, we give the output. And at the same time, we try to identify the features for this input. So somehow it's uh, like this. Um, um, and now, how the rate is created. And our good question, it's um, about the error rate. So um, error rate, it's uh, in general, uh, it's the um, number of, uh, so you have different tests and from this number of tests, how much tests they are failed. If it's just 10% or 5% or 3% of all the tests, so it means that you have and it's an average. So you have many, many tests that are running. And after many tests, you take the average, how much, for example, you have 100 images and you turn it once, twice, more and more and more and more and more. And each time you have three or five images that are with errors or six or five, seven. You take an average and this is, is, a, is a error rate. So, for example, it's for the humans. And for the algorithms, it's the same thing. Um, uh, to, okay, so um, uh, something else. Um, uh, the next, um, can you give a small overview about the system that train the data continuously in streaming? And uh, for example, each time we receive data, we train a new model in order to improve the prediction. Thank you in advance. Um, yeah. Um, yes, this system, there are, there are many different kind of characteristics that need to be taken uh, take, uh, take in consideration regarding this system. Because uh, learning, it's a hard uh, process. So it means that it consumes very much effort in the same time. And from one side, it's learning process that need to be, if it's continuously permanent from the data that came from the streaming, it means that we need to have something like different systems. From one side, a system that is deployed in production and it's used from another side, uh, another system in background, something like that it's rebuilt every time the model and rebuild the model. But rebuilding the model also, it's not something very, a uh, good thing because <laughs> if we come back to the previous question, that's a good one regarding error rate. So it's important that we don't rebuild the model, that it's, uh, it's uh, not so good in proportion with previous model. So it means that we need to retest the model before that we rebuild the previous model. So it means that we need to have something in background that build the system retest many times if the model is not okay to improve the model and rebuild again and just after to redeploy with new one this system are very complex uh, sincerely uh, we had a solution with this one so it's uh, it's many devops uh, many computing engineers testing verifications uh, also, a user one is to include a human and agent that can revalidate the model during the time if he has some criteria how to can test the model in real time in order to predict that this model is trained very good or not. Um, yeah, something. So this is uh, is my answer. I hope that I uh, answered to um, to your question. And an R1 regarding Google Auto ML. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting project from the Google, what I found. They uh, try to build um, uh, <laughs> a model, machine learning model that will uh, uh, train and will uh, identify an R, that if an R model it's uh, make error or not. So for example, AutoML, 
it was used in the last one of, of the last projects of the Google for uh, in order to simulate the environment for the human who begin to learn to to walk. So AutoML generated different kind of uh, environments, uh, stones, uh, roads, and so on. And this robot or human, uh, so it was a machine learning model, tried to, um, uh, to learn how to work better each time. So AutoML, so something it's, from one side, it's not only for one problem that it's uh, what I found it's amazing for this project. It's for different kinds of projects. So with AutoML, we can generate different kinds of environments and situations for NR models that can uh, learn better what they need to do. So something AutoML generate an environment for um, uh, artificial intelligence. So, and I found it's uh, really, it's amazing that Google do it uh, for this uh, kind of things. And uh, what I remember, if I remember correctly, during one week or a few days without ML, they managed to implement a robot, okay, a digital robot that was able to walk correctly like a human uh, instead of millions and hundred, um, hundreds of millions of dollars that was spent by <laughs> Uh, American military in order to build a robot in real environment. So it was a uh, different kind of things. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have um, time? Um, okay. I hope it's all. So um, I will try to answer to your questions uh, writing. So sincerely the webinar it's uh, at the end so thank you for thank you very much for your time i hope it was uh, uh, it was useful for you and um, in few days you will receive the recording of this presentation a powerpoint presentation and and feedback survey regarding webinar so um, feel free to give us feedback so it's very important for us and um, have a nice week bye bye